<laughs> Welcome to the Henderson Library's Home Edition. Even though you're not sitting right here with me sharing stories, I hope you'll enjoy the stories I'm gonna share this afternoon. I brought one of my friends with me, Donkey, and when I tell stories, I tell old, old stories. My name is Miss Rita, and I tell stories that have been told for hundreds of years, long before there were books, and we know, Donkey, you're in lots of books, especially like Sylvester and the Magic Pebble. But long before there were books, there were stories. And Donkey is gonna be in my last story today. So I'm gonna set you right here on the table. And I hope you'll be a great listener like our audience as we share two stories. And then I promise you, Donkey, you can be in the last story. Since I'm not reading you any stories today, I don't need my reading glasses, so I'll let Donkey be in charge of those. And I'm gonna tell you some riddle stories today. Riddle stories are some of the oldest stories in the world. And people love to gather around the fire and tell each other riddle stories and guess the answer. There's not really one answer that's right. I'm gonna share the stories and the answers that were told to me, but as you listen to these stories, you can make up your own ending because remember our summer reading theme this year is Imagine Your Story. The first story we're going to share is called The Three Dolls. There was once a king who loved to solve riddles. He would send for riddles from far and wide and he always could guess the answer. And then one day a box arrived, Donkey, for this king. And in the box were three dolls. Each doll looked the same. Each doll felt the same and they even smelled the same. But there was a little note inside the box that said, Your Majesty, one of these dolls, in fact, two of these dolls, in fact, three of these dolls, are not the same. Each doll is unique and different. If you are as good at solving riddles as I have heard, you can tell the difference between the three dolls, certainly. Well, the king looked at each of those three dolls. Oh, he thought, I don't know. They look the same, they feel the same, they're dressed the same. I don't know the difference. This riddle has stumped me. I shall ask my advisor, my wisest advisor, to come and help me. So he called the advisor in and he said, which one of these dolls is different? Are all three different? Tell me, advisor, you are wise. Well, the wise advisor looked at the three dolls. They looked the same, he couldn't tell. So he said to the king, your majesty, this is a waste of time, and he left. Well, then the king invited in his jester, his clown, his court clown, and he said, Jester, can you tell the difference between these three dolls? And the jester looked at those three dolls, and he picked them up and said, Oh, dollies, let's play. Oh, you're no help, said the king, and he sent the jester away. Finally, he sent for his storyteller, and he said, Storyteller, I have a riddle before me. I have received a box of three dolls. The riddle says they are different, but I cannot tell the difference. Can you? Hmm, said the storyteller. If you permit me, your majesty, and he plucked a beard of hair from the king's beard, not the whole beard, just one hair, and it was long and straight, and he said, watch this. And he took that long, straight, gray hair, and he put it in one of the doll's ears and it went in and in and in, and it never came out. Ah, said the storytellers, this doll is a wise man. For what he hears, he keeps to himself. Excellent, said the king. Now what of the second? Ow! He pulled another hair from the king's beard, and he put it in the second doll's ear, and it went in and in and in, and it came out the other ear. Ah, said the storyteller, this doll is a fool for what goes in one ear comes right out the other. Excellent, said the king. I knew you would find the answer to this riddle. Now, what of the third doll? But this time the king plucked his own hair from his beard and handed it to the storyteller. And the storyteller put that long, straight, gray hair in one ear. And it went in and in, but it didn't come out the other ear or it didn't stay inside. It came out the doll's mouth. But instead of straight, it came all curly. Ah, said the storyteller, this doll is a storyteller. For what he hears, he tells. 
Excellent, said the king. Now we have solved this riddle, but in solving the riddle, we have created a new one. For my hairs are straight and long, but the hair came out of the mouth all curly. Why is this? Ah, said the storyteller. The answer is, whenever a storyteller hears a story, he tells it in his own way. He adds a twist to the story. And no two storytellers tell a story the same. So as you tell yourself stories and tell your friends stories this summer, remember they won't all be the same. You can tell the story of the three dolls and it will be different than the way I tell it or the way Donkey would tell it because everyone imagines their own story. Now from three dolls, we're gonna to go to one cookie. This story comes from Sweden and there are many versions of it. There's some American versions as well. And you probably have heard this story before. So if you know the answer, don't tell your friends. When I get to the part where you have to guess, then you can turn your video off for a minute and see if you can solve the riddle of this story because you are a storyteller. There, were, there was once a brother and a sister who loved chocolate chip cookies. Is there anyone here who does not like chocolate chip cookies? I don't see many hands going up. They love chocolate chip cookies. And one day they got home from school and they said to their mom, mom, please, can we make some chocolate chip cookies before dinner? And she said, I don't think that's a good idea. You see, I've made your favorite meal for dinner tonight, spaghetti and meatballs. And if you make cookies, you'll eat too many and you'll be too full. Oh no, they promised. We promise we'll only eat one cookie, one. No cookie dough, just one cookie. Well, said their mother, if you promise you're only going to eat one cookie, you can make cookies. And with their older sister's help, they baked cookies. And after they baked the cookies and put them out to cool, they each ate one and only one. And then their mother called them in for dinner. Let's eat, she said, spaghetti and meatballs. Oh. We're too full. We couldn't eat another thing. What, said their mother? You promised me you'd only eat one cookie. We did, we just ate one. Did you eat cookie dough? No, we didn't. We promised we only ate one cookie. How could this be, my friends? Where's the truth and where's the lie? If they were being truthful, and they were, they only ate one cookie. How could they be so full they couldn't eat their favorite dinner? You can stop the video now and think about it and then turn it back on and I'll tell you what happened in my version of this story. Well, the mother went into the kitchen and she looked at the cookies they had made and indeed they only ate one. But how big do you think that cookie was? This big? This big, this big, this big. Stretch your arms out as far as you can. That's how giant that cookie was. And yes, they only ate one, but it was a giant cookie. So we went from three dolls to one cookie, and then we promised this guy he could be in our last story today. This is the story of the donkey and the carrots Don Donkey, I'm sorry, I don't have any real carrots for you to eat today, but we're going to use some imaginary carrots, and we're going to share your story. There was once a farmer who had a donkey. Oh, he was a good donkey, too. He went with the farmer every day to the market to sell potatoes. And he carried, he pulled that cart, and he did his best work, and the donkey was always rewarded with carrots. But one day, the farmer came home, and he said to his wife, you will not believe what we saw at the market today. What did you see, said the farmer's wife. We saw donkeys. <laughs> I believe you. We have a donkey. Lots of farmers have donkeys. Oh, but the farmer said, this donkey was eating carrots. Well, I believe you, said his wife. We feed our donkey carrots. Oh, but the farmer said, this donkey had a rope tied around his neck that was three feet long. Can you put your hands out to measure about three feet? And we saw that donkey walk 20 feet away to eat his carrots. Nonsense, said the wife. It's not possible. Well, if you don't believe me, ask our neighbor. He was there. So she went next door and she said to the neighbor, were you at the market today? 
Yes. Did you see a donkey eating carrots? Yes. Did you see a donkey eating carrots with a rope tied around his neck that was three feet long and he walked 20 feet away to eat carrots? Yes, said the neighbor. I don't believe you, said the farmer's wife. You and my husband are silly. I'm going to the market tomorrow with our donkey and I'm going to look for myself. And the farmer's wife got to the market and what did she see there? Lots of donkeys. And she saw one donkey, not you, but she saw another donkey with a rope tied around his neck that was three feet long. How long is that? About that long. And then she saw that donkey walk 20 feet away to eat carrots. She would not have believed it if she hadn't seen it herself. But my friend, how could this be? You were there, you saw it. How could a donkey with a three foot rope tied around his neck possibly walk 20 feet away to eat carrots? Now, don't tell anybody the answer yet. They're gonna turn, turn off their video and they're gonna think about this and see if they can figure out the answer to this riddle. Are you ready? Okay, are you ready to help them and show them what happened? Well, this donkey did indeed have a rope tied around his neck and it was three feet long. This one's in a circle. And we'll put it around your neck. But guess what? Did you guess it? The rope wasn't tied to anything else. And so that donkey could go anywhere he wanted with that rope tied around his neck. Now you can go anywhere you want with your imagination this summer. Remember, imagine your story. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out the Henderson Library's YouTube channel for more books and more stories.